Hello and welcome back to my garage. Today we're going to make those four link boxes or the boxes that need to be welded in into the chassis of the car. I'm right now at the same stage as I was with the diamond plates, but I have a cardboard template instead of a paper template. I don't have a paper template at hand and I wanted to do this now, so I'm using my cardboard template. And the only thing I need to do is now trace it. And of course, now is the inside line, is the line I need to cut. So yeah, I'm going to spend a little time at the bandsaw. It isn't going to be that bad, it is uh, doable. But yeah, it takes just some time. The side plate of the boxes are done. As you can see they turn out uh, pretty well. They're still tacked together and that's the way I uh, want it to be. These are the reinforcement plates that come uh, right here. For me it's an other trip to the bandsaw. But for you, I already made them. So these come just right here. What we're going to do is weld them into place. Also, of course, the one on the other side. And when that's done, we're going to drill the holes that uh, need to be in there. And after that, we're going to separate the two pieces. So we definitely know that they're the same. But before we're going to weld these, um, this is bare metal. This is bare metal. So if we weld them like this together, the chance is that they are going to rot very, very soon. So we need to protect that. And the best thing to do is with some weld-through primer. And the best I have ever tried is this stuff. This is uh, from Upol. It's well too. And this stuff is amazing. It's just great. It's, it sprays really nice. Uh, it dries really fast. And it, well, it welds pretty damn well. Uh, I have tried some other uh, weld primers, but they're not that quality as this is. Maybe there are better out there, but this is the best one I uh, I ever tried. So if you're in the market for uh, some weld through primer, try this one. Not sponsored, by the way. But like with every other paint, you can have the best stuff out there, but without some good preparations it doesn't work so be sure you degrease it then sand it a little bit and uh, you're ready to go And now we wait about 20 minutes and we do a second coat. All the parts that need coating has some uh, coating on it. It's all dried up. So now it's just a matter of uh, placing them into somewhat the right place. And then uh, weld them together. And we do the same to the other side. And if it is all tacked together, then of course we're going to uh, tack it a little bit more.
Next thing, of course, we need to put in these holes. So what I'm going to do is cut out the template, do it on there, put in some holes, and uh, we're almost done. I made an error in my template. Don't worry, the rest of the template is just fine. It's just that the holes are not in the right place or how do I say it? They're not uh, vertical. The holes were just leaning to the back a little bit. So I wanted these to be vertical with the car. And now they are. So I need, of course, to update my template for maybe some future projects, who knows, because this isn't my only uh, first generation Corolla. I've got three of them. Who knows who the, what the future will hold. are now done. I test fitted them in the car and they look just fine. Of course I did a put a bit of uh, coating on there just to help to prevent rust. Now it's just a matter of uh, well putting it all back together. Of course I have made some side plates already, just some strips that I need to uh, cut to length and also, I need to bend this one, I believe. So, uh, let's start doing that. Of course, these plates need to be as square as possible. So I'm going to mount them on these, or tack them to this uh, fit plate. Just to reduce some warpage and uh, make sure it's as straight as possible. This first plate I'm going to weld on the outside, like so. Not the in, but on the outside. The reason is, the chances are that this hitting something uh, is very uh, reasonable. I just want to make sure that there is a fat plate, so it can ha handle some, uh, some abuse. I know this isn't the best uh, thing to do, using a shock to press this plate, but let me assure you, this thing is empty and it has the, well, it has the right radius or somewhat the right radius. And this is the only thing I have, so it has to work.
Next up, we want to box the top section. So I cut a piece of strip, just a width of what we need. And now it's just a matter of uh, tack it into place and uh, weld it uh, all the way through. I'm going to clean this up, uh, put some weld primer on it, and if that's dry, then I'm going to test fit it in the car. Hopefully it uh, will all fit, because it uh, took uh, quite some time to make one of these. But nonetheless, I call this uh, done, hopefully. And that is one of these boxes ready. As you can see, it does fit really nicely in the car. Of course, the body needs a little bit of massaging to get it into place, but that's not a big deal. Of course, I need to double check everything, just to be sure. The only thing for me to do now is make the other one, and after that, weld them into place. But that is uh, for another video. So after this, I need to put it into the car, weld it all up. And then of course we need those uh, link bars. That is not going to be a really big of a project. And after that I have to think about the coilovers. I can put them into the place where the shocks were. And I can modify the body to make it fit. It doesn't have to be that big of a deal. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I am thinking about making it a pushrod system. I know it's maybe a little bit of fancy for the car, but oh well, we're building anyway and we're welding and uh, it, it is fun. I'm still having fun with this car. So a push rod system, I think it would be really cool. And again, it is something I didn't do before. So I think that that's going to be a lot of fun. And it isn't necessarily the biggest job in the world to do. Just making some drawings, cut it all out, weld it together, and we're done. But most of the time it's not as easy as, uh, as I say it is. So, yeah, that's something uh, to think about. I still have a little time uh, uh, to think about it when I'm welding this uh, into its place. If I go with a pushrod system, then I have a couple of choices. One choice is, of course, put the shocks in the in the boot. Um, that's probably the most logical thing to do. Uh, the coolest thing to do is, of course, on the uh, uh, shelf. Yeah, we call it a um, hoede plank or a head shelf. I don't know for sure what the, is the English name, but I will look it up. Uh, that's of course the, the most fancy one because everybody can see it uh, through the window. Of course another option is uh, the backrest of the seat. Uh, maybe do something there, but then again I cannot put a seat back in there. So that's maybe not a the best solution. It's something to think about. But yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it or at least learned something from it. I do know I learned a lot doing this, so I hopefully you do also. 
And if you want to follow me around, you know what to do. And I will see you next time. Bye. Push red suspension.